With Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith, welcoming you to the Bet MGM studio. On this edition of Titans All Access, Mike Keith invites you to follow him through Tennessee as we get to experience a Titans watch party in Chattanooga. Dave McGinnis takes us beneath the surface with Harold Landry. The Nissan Insider features not one, but two Titans newcomers, one on offense and one on defense. And each week, we talk with the head coach. It's Brian Callahan. We call it Callie's Corner, and it's presented by SeatGeek. The Titans gave up seven plays of 20 yards or longer in the game against the Packers. Six of those were in the first half. What led to the increase in explosive plays by the opposition? You know, I think they hit a couple of nice plays. I mean, the first play of the game was, you know, we were they were pretty dialed in to, to go knocking the run out, and it was a nice run action, that, and they had a guy slide out the back door, and um, just good play. We, we, weren't, we weren't assigned fully right obviously that's how explosives get given up but the ones that are the hard ones are the are, are the third and long explosives that get first downs where you essentially have a team off the field and and they they gain a first down on an explosive play when it's third and 15 you, those are the ones that are kind of critical and killer and that that's where i was uh, explosive plays happen but those ones in particular were, were just tough to tough to stomach when we're, we're trying to climb back in the game. So Ernest Jones led the team with 13 tackles. Kenneth Murray had eight tackles and two sacks. Are you pleased overall with the play of your linebackers? Yeah, I think it's a group that, um, you know, we had to re remake in a sense. You know, we had to we had to go get two linebackers. And I think Jack's done a nice job, too. But Ernest has really stepped up and played really well. That group was one that we had maybe some question marks going into this season. And, and thus far, they have answered the the bell and really played pretty well for us I think uh, both in the run and the pass coverage. DeAndre Hopkins performance was that the biggest positive to come out of Sunday's game for the offense at least? He did a nice job I mean we needed a, we needed his help in that game we needed him to make some plays and uh, he did and he looked like the Hopkins that, that everybody knows and uh, loves around here and what he's done for his whole career he's he's got a knack for getting open even at his at his years in the league he just knows how to do it and he's a very, very, very strong catcher of the football. And so in those contested plays, like on the touchdown, he goes and grabs the ball and makes play. And that's what we need more of. We need more guys to make more plays um, like that. So like last week, you're not going to know who the opponent's quarterback is going into all of your prep. What's a little different, though, is with the Dolphins and – kind of their mix of guys, they could change a lot of what they do offensively based on who they decide to put in that spot. Is that concerning? I mean, it's always concerning. Yeah, it's, it's just an element of, of what it is in the NFL right now. And I think uh, Mike is as an excellent offensive football coach. He knows how to put his players in great positions. And whatever quarterback we have, you know, is going to be put in those advantageous spots as best they can. They're going to help the quarterback every which way is possible and they we have to be able to play with our rules we have to make sure we're tackling sound make sure we're sound in every which way we are because they're already a difficult scheme to go against they just they do a really nice job and they got good players on the perimeter and so they'll put the quarterback in spots to be successful another week and another great corner this time it's Jalen Ramsey what kind of a challenge does he pose to your entire passing game he's able to take away receivers and that's what these these corners do and they find ways um, to to eliminate half of the field when they can and you know we pl played against Jalen before and uh, he's fantastic he's as good he's as good as they come I mean we just we go from Jalen Johnson to Sauce Gardner to Jair Alexander to Jalen Ramsey and so the, the the hits just keep on coming I mean there's a, every team's got good corners and we happen to be playing against defenses that are really good defenses and a large part of that is because of the type of corners that they have and they make life really hard offensively so we got a work cut out for us for more of our conversation with brian callahan we invite you to enjoy the otp you can watch the otp on the titans youtube channel or at tennesseetitans.com don't forget to subscribe to the otp wherever you get your podcasts there is only one official titans podcast better known as the otp stay tuned more Titans All Access right after this. Welcome back to Titans All Access from the Bet MGM studio. Amy Wells does extra work this week for the Nissan Insider. 
We couldn't pick between running back Tony Pollard and cornerback Legereus Sneed, so Amy said, I'll interview them both. We hope you appreciate her extra effort for this week's Nissan Insider, or should I say Nissan Insiders? Tony Pollard, Legereus Sneed, you were a huge off-season acquisition here for the Titans. Do you feel any pressure associated with that? Oh, yes, it's a lot of pressure. You know, I enjoy the pressure, um, you know, having everybody locked in. Coming to an organization, you know, every year you have to reprove yourself. And, you know, it's just part of the business. And, you know, coming from Dallas, that's something that you get used to. You get used to being in the spotlight, the Monday night, Sunday night, Thursday night game, the primetime game. So it just comes with the territory. You learn to, learn to love it. Because you're such an established veteran, people know what you can do on the field. Do you feel like you've been put in a little bit more of a leadership position here with the Titans? You can kind of say that. You know, I was always a guy that, that led by example. You know, I'd rather, you know, guys look up to me and, and see what I've done and, and what I do and how I approach my day by day and learn off of that and just lead by example from what I'm doing. I just got to ride the wave and take what they give me. I got to be better. It's go time. Go time. I have the young guys, just like I have my kids looking up to me. I have young guys when I come in here ask me questions. You know, that's a lot of pressure. You know, I have to show them the way. You know, I had guys who showed me the way and I try to install them to the young guys. What is your your leadership style? Uh, man, I'm not vocal guy. I'm a very, you know, lead by example. You know, you see me go by my work, watch the film, you know, I take my job very serious, you know, no matter what. What do you like about this offense here? The talent, the the playmakers that we have on the outside and just the way that we use the guys on the team, the way that we use the versatility and guys that can do different things in different positions and just using it to the best of their ability. What do you like about this Titans defense this year? Oh man, everybody's hungry. You know, Benoit, he's coming there every day with the energy. You know, we have a complacent day, you know, he tell us don't get complacent. You know, keep going every day and every day. And he stall us, he also tell us that got to prove ourselves every day. You were a fourth round draft pick. Do you feel like you were overlooked coming into the NFL? I wouldn't say overlooked. You know, everything is God's plans. You know, it kept me hungry. It kept me humble. I feel like that's a part of the mindset, you know, to help me get to where I am now. Um, you know, just just keeping that chip on my shoulder and, you know, just, just always feeling like I have something to prove. In college, everybody kind of didn't know exactly what to do with you because you were so versatile. You didn't really fit in one spot. Do you think that that is to your benefit now that you have experience in a lot of different places and you can kind of keep people on their toes? I became very valued. You know, it's just like I tell coaches, just throw me on the field. I'll play whatever y'all want me to play. I will learn it. So just having that, that receiver background, that, you know, that good hand-eye coordination, being good with ball skills, and on top of being able to run the ball, it just it makes it easier to be on the field a lot more. You've got to have a lot of confidence to be able to say that, though. Uh, yes, I mean, it's just what I've been doing my entire life, you know, from wide receiver to defense, you know, I'm just used to it. When did you realize that throughout your career you were going to be getting more of these responsibilities. You were going to be a guy that was going to be up front. You were going to be someone who was going to be thrown on the field. Was there a moment where you realized, I'm going to have to step up and take some of this on? Yes, I could say uh, my rookie year. You know, I had to go in, some things happened, and coach just threw me in there. And I was like, it's time, you know, step it up and it's your job now. Were there things that you changed in that moment where you realized this is it? Yes, uh, I went by my job totally different, you know. I was studying way harder than what I was, you know. Staying up late nights, coming in early, you know, giving guys and veterans who taught me the way. And those are the things that you've just kept in your kept routine going, forever? Yes, forever, my whole entire career. Yeah, I grow up fast in this league. Fast, very fast. <laughs> When Titans All Access continues, I invite you to follow me through Tennessee as Titans Radio's crew heads to Chattanooga for a Titans watch party. Don't worry, it'll make sense when we explain it next. Variety is the spice of life. We all have to try new things, to have new experiences. In this edition of Follow Me Through Tennessee, presented by Grayline, Mike Keith takes the Titans radio crew to one of his childhood hometowns, Chattanooga. We try something new, and we have a blast. We love what we get to do as part of the Tennessee Titans. I'm speaking for Amy Wells, Coach Dave McGinnis, Rhett Bryan, and me. Never once have we been anything but thankful to have the opportunities that we do. But we have wondered what it would be like 
to be part of a game day watch party with a bunch of Titans fans because it does look like a lot of fun. So we called up the Chattanooga Titans fans and headed down I-24 to Scenic City to see what a Sunday afternoon or Monday night with them would be like. We get here probably an hour, hour and a half before kickoff uh, to set up all the flags and all the uh, the signage outside and everything just to kind of attract people in. You know, we're doing our first down chance, we're doing our third down chance, and people out on the street walking down the road hear us outside and it brings them in. Their regular hangout is the Tailgate Brewery on Market Street, right next to the famous Chattanooga Choo Choo. There was no game to watch for the Titans when we were there. There was no football game at all. But Tennessee was playing in the College World Series, so a large crowd came out, and we got that Sunday feed. It started with four people and just kind of evolved from there, and uh, you know, year number six and growing by leaps and bounds. Dr. Blake Shoemaker represented the Chattanooga Titans fans as we recorded a special edition of the OTP. I mean, it's amazing because, you know, we do the, the patches every year and we kind of collaborate on the design, see what we're going to come up with, and then we basically sell them, you know, close to cost, and then we use those proceeds to kind of buy the giveaway. So if we're out and about and we see something at a local retailer, like, oh, they have these, you know, a Titans Bluetooth speaker, or they have this, or they have that, you know, it's kind of a collection of that, and then we've increased... You know, our presence, the team is becoming aware of us. So last year, it was a huge deal for us to get listed on the Titans website as an official, you know, watch party partner here in Chattanooga. When we presented the Chattanooga Titans fans with a game-worn Titans helmet, you could tell that it was going to be part of a new tradition in their game day routine. We want to give you something as a group. Wow. And our hope is that you can draw your winners out of here on game days. I love that. But or I just wear it around. But I also <laughs> hope I also hope that maybe you'll all come and touch it for luck at the start of the game. That'll love be that your too. thing. And that uh, wherever you go, the Chattanooga Titans fans will carry around this game worn Titans helmet. And even without a football game on television, we still got a feeling of what a Titans Sunday is like with this exciting group. The Chattanooga Titans fans are what following the NFL is all about. Food, fellowship, and football. We actually have uh, people uh, you know, from all walks of life, all locations here in Chattanooga, and they come in to watch their games, and we just kind of welcome them like family. The Titans are indeed Tennessee's NFL team. Play fake Levis, has time, fires over the middle, caught. Making the catch is Hopkins. He's hit immediately at the 21 by McKinney. That's a first down for the Titans. It's time for the decision of the week, brought to you by Hughes and Coleman. The Titans' decision to get DeAndre Hopkins more involved in the offense was wise. First and 10 at the 11. Levis throwing back, shoulder ball caught, spinning into the end zone and scoring a touchdown is the living legend himself, DeAndre Hopkins. Touchdown, Titans! Hopkins had a season-high six catches for 73 yards and a touchdown last Sunday. We've seen glimpses of what they're capable of with, with Hop having a nice game, and then Calvin had a really nice game last week, and now we got to find a way to get more opportunities for both those guys, and Tyler does what he does, which is convert third downs and, and like he did on the first drive of the game. Um, those guys are all productive players. I think they're all right about, I think they all have, what, eight catches right now? I mean, they, but I'd like to see them all have more. More D-hop is better for the Tennessee offense. Play fake, he's in trouble, steps up, fires, man is open, it's Hopkins. Tackled right in midfield by Alexander. Gain of 20 and a first down for the Titans. Nice little sail route against, against man to man. The decision of the week brought to you by Hughes and Coleman, official injury lawyers of the Tennessee Titans. First and 10 at the 11. Levis throwing back, shoulder ball caught, spinning into the end zone and scoring a touchdown is the living legend himself, DeAndre Hopkins. Touchdown, Titans! Welcome back to Titans All Access from the Bet MGM studio. We love to go beneath the surface with coach Dave McGinnis, especially especially when he analyzes linebackers. After all, that was his area of expertise as a football coach. This week, we are with Mac as he watches Harold Landry.
All right, today we are going to look at Harold Landry to have 10 and a half sacks in the back end of the season. I mean, Harold Landry has got a special gift and it's what got him drafted in the second round out of Boston College. This type of a footwork drill is right in Harold Landry's wheelhouse. That's where he makes a living. He makes a living with being able to be, to be flexible, to be able to be sudden, and to be able to have quick feet and balanced feet and intelligent feet. And when I say intelligent feet, he understands, he doesn't waste steps. All right, you got the big men working. I love watching big men work their feet. This is essential. This is essential. Watch Harold Landry. Look how quick he is, and look how look how how fast he is and smooth. But look how calm he is from the waist down. The other thing about Harold Landry's game, once you get into a team setting, he is always to the ball. He's always to the ball. You know, Denard Wilson always talks about finishing at the football, and it doesn't mean just once the tackle's made. He wants everybody to roll call to that ball. And and Harold Landry's always been one of those guys. Just, just something that you know you may people may never notice. Or what he was stretching, and he's stretching his upper body, because you got to get you got to get your upper body flexible too if you're going to rush the passer. I mean, it's not just it's not just in your lowers. You got to have the weight balanced on the balls of your feet. You don't want to be up on your toes. You don't want to be quivering like a dog getting ready to hit a screen door. What you've got to be able to do is you got to have good balance in your cleats in the ground, but but enough forward lean as to where you can spring out of your of your stance, whether it's two or three point. What's extremely important, you've heard me talk about this on broadcast, you've heard me talk about it uh, on 104.5 when I'm talking about positional evaluations. It's always on defense, it's eyes before feet. If you don't know what you're looking at, there's no way you can get there. It's eyes before feet. So you have to be able to coordinate what you're looking at then with all your movements. And it has to be instantaneous. This is shock and shed. They've got a ball carrier back there. This is a one man shock and shed sled. The ball carriers, they're part of it. They're not going full speed. Again, all of these movements have to become have to become second nature. It has to be second nature. There he oh played he played that perfectly. What you saw him do there, uh, the, the ta tackle number 72 was trying to drive him down past. He he forced everything to move and to move back outside. He maintained his gap integrity and then closed the window. Gap integrity, closed the window. Skim the edge, get to the launch point, stick that inside foot in the ground, come back to him. Great example. Give it to Mostert on the pitch, around left end. He's gonna get in there. Touchdown, Miami Dolphins. Well, they said we're gonna win this game, let's do it. They said we're gonna win it, let's do it. I've seen something like this before, but it's been a long time. Let's go offense, man, let's go. We still gotta get it. See if Levis can get the Titans down the field quickly. Spears, a juggling catch to the 45, Spears to the 50, Spears to the 49 of the Dolphins. Screens it, caught, Spears, 45-50, 45-40, run out of bounds inside the 35-yard line. Firing downfield, man is there, it's caught. Levis gets him on the ball. First and goal at the two. Levis looks, 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 pumps, steps up, looks, throws, caught! Touchdown! Titans! DeAndre Hopkins! Go! 240 remaining. This ain't over. No, it's not over. See what Levis has got here. He's in the backfield with Spears. Levis sprints out to the right. Firing, man is wide open. Two for Tennessee, and the Titans are within six with 2.40 to play. So why not? Why not us? Levis takes the snap, looking, looking. Firing downfield, man is wide open. Hopkins, 45-40, 35 and out of bounds at the 30. Levis, play fake, quick throw, caught. Akakwo on the screen to the right. Akakwo motoring inside the 20. <laughs> Did you see this coming? He goes toss, coming around right end. It's Spears inside the 10 and down to the six. Give Henry, turning the left side, diving. Touchdown, Titans! With 149 to go. Snap, set, his kick. Oh, it got quiet. Good! The Dolphins have to be reeling as 245 ago in this game, they were up 14. Now they're down one. 30 seconds to go. Tonga Vailoa on the ball. 
looking, looking, in trouble, trip, Sid! Yes! Oh, hell yes! Oh my goodness, Harold Landry! And Will Levis is going to get to take a knee, and the Titans have come up with the most remarkable 434 that I can ever remember. They gave this game away. It was awful. And yet, they didn't quit. Final score from Hard Rock Stadium. Tennessee 28, Miami 27, as the Titans play on Monday night. And they get it done for Frankie, again. Oh man, love to get an exciting win like that this coming Monday night in Miami. Titans Radio Airtime, 5 Central, 6 Eastern, with a 6.30 Central Time kickoff. Titans Dolphins, Monday night on Titans Radio. We hope you'll join us. For Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith, thanking you for joining us for Titans All Access, and we'll see you next time.